guys, my name is Crystal. Alexa, what's the time, please? The time is 9.54 a.m. It's four degrees outside here in Rochester. There's no way I'm in a hurry to go outside. My mum has rung two times this morning. I've missed both calls. My mum, Jennifer's rung twice. I've missed both the calls. Um, I haven't got money to get a taxi. My mum pays for the taxis each way. I've put my last remaining money on the gas meter. Um, I've got somebody texting me about food when I've got a bad stomach anyway. They're going to cook me my favourite meal. Uh, Mr Invisible, where are you? <laughs> um, so, it's minus four degrees outside here in Rochester. And we are inundated with noise again. I'm not going up to my mum's. I'm not Jennifer. I'm Crystal. Next door sounds like there's a boomerang. An Australian um, didgeridoo, sorry. Ooh-wah, 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 ooh -wah. Maybe a hoover sounds like an uh, Australian, um, Australian musical instrument. There's not a load. It's not upstairs. It's next door. Sounds like they're playing an Australian instrument. Outside, they're drilling. So it's like going back to the start in 2020. And the only one being actually quiet is the guy upstairs. I can't hear him at all. <laughs> so we have got... So it's minus four degrees out here. Minus four. You can... See my breath. And they've started drilling near the corner of the flats. So you can see, this is what happened in 2020 and someone's talking on a loudspeaker. So right near my flats I've got noise. Um, Someone's talking on loudspeaker to one of the builders. So I've got noise from next door, noise like drilling outside. Um, I didn't sleep very well last night. I had about three hours sleep. That's the way life is. So what am I going to do, guys? I'm going to cheer, me, cheer myself up. I managed to buy some things yesterday. Um... These are a headband with lights on. So I was having fun with these yesterday, trying to get them to work. So you put these on your head and it's like you're lit up like a Christmas tree. So I, I was feeling okay yesterday afternoon. I was trying to cheer myself up through hard times. My mum said she couldn't afford to have me up there. She hadn't been to the cash point. It wasn't dispensing notes. I actually went to the NatWest um, bank in Stroud and that machine was dispensing notes. Most cash points do dispense notes. So she told me over the past three days she couldn't get hold of any money. So today she rings me up and says I can go up there. After my son's been round, um, he's cooked, cooked me a compo chicken dinner last night. He had a bath and then he went off back to London because he didn't intend to stay but he couldn't get transport back home to London. So I'm in my flat by myself. Like I said, it's minus four outside. When I do go outside and take Max for a walk, I won't be out there for very long. But I just don't understand how my mum now can afford to get me up there in a taxi if she couldn't for the last three days. It doesn't make sense to me. So yesterday she couldn't go to the cash point. It wasn't dispensing notes. But all of a sudden, first thing Thursday morning, it's dispensing notes. She's got some money to get me to, to take me up in a taxi. I don't understand. When I needed help, there was nobody there, right? Now I've put my gas on. My gas is on. I don't need to get cold. Um, I have an upset stomach. I'm not in a hurry to eat a big dinner. I've got a bad tummy. I feel exceptionally tired and irritable, as you do when you don't get any sleep. You feel irritable. 
there's noise from next door, there's noise outside, I'm trying to cheer myself up on my own, right? To cover up that horrible noise outside, I will put the telly on or I will put some music on. But I don't want to wake my neighbour up, up upstairs if he's sleeping or resting. Because maybe he's got to go to work and I haven't. Because I'm not like that. I respect other people. Even if someone's horrendously rude and nasty to me, I don't act the same way as them because that's not me. So yesterday I went into the works. My son picked up a calendar, so I got this tarot colouring book in the works, Chatham. A tarot colouring book. I like tarot cards. And there you are. This one's the tower. It's got death and the devil in there. So you have death. There's the tarot card death. And it's got the devil, which is... I'm going to find it's displayed as a beast, which the devil is, like a horned goat. There we are. That's how the devil is portrayed in a deck of tarot cards. A deck of tarot cards, that's what the devil looks like. A horned goat, a horned hairy goat. Um, you ask Alexa what the devil is. Alexa, what's a devil? Sorry, I don't know that. Alexa, what does devil mean? As a noun, devil is usually defined as the supreme spirit of evil, Satan. As a verb, devil is usually defined as to annoy, harass, pester. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for devil. So the devil is the ultimate evil. Why would somebody worship Satan? Why, why, why would somebody call a human being Satan, the devil, and devil worship? The devil is evil. The devil is the ultimate evil. And the devil would want to eradicate good. And I'm a good person. So of course the devil himself would want to get rid of a good person, someone that's trying to expose evil, the devil would try and conquer good. But we all know in books and in films that good overcomes evil. Whatever the devil tries to do to me, in tr trying to kill me, run me over, whatever, good overcomes evil. So anybody that worships Satan is not a good person. Right, I also got a diary. As you know, I've said in previous videos that when I was in a woman's refuge, and you don't put men in a woman's refuge, because I was a woman escaping domestic violence from a man. So I was put in a women's refuge and uh, Sue Portlock, one of my workers in the safe house that I was put into, said to me, you know, to write a diary from the, for the purpose. Tell in your diary what the perpetrators are doing. What are they doing to you? Write it down on a daily basis, what they're doing, so that you can come back to it and show it to the police as evidence. She said to me, every little thing, write it down, then give it to the police. And of course the police always attack me, because that's what the devil does, it attacks someone that's good. So they put a good person in a police cell, while the evil got away with it. Because I was told that the devil is 666. Ambulance, fire and police are 999. So reversed, that is 666 for the devil. And 
I was actually told that the police ambulance fire service would not help me because they're in leagues with the devil. That is what I was told. That's no word of a lie. I'm not mad. I was told Chatham was the underworld and Rochester was the red light district when I came down to Chatham in 2008 on the train. I was told Rochester was the land of prostitution, prostitutes. I was brought up by a mother that was suffering from chronic schizophrenia. Right? Somebody told me the only way I would get better was to be away from my mum, Jennifer. That's what someone told me. But every time I try, I'm controlled with money. Money. Don't bite the hand that feeds. Money. At this moment in time, I've got no money. But my mum is calling me up. And suddenly she's got money to take me up to Chatham in a taxi when I've got no money to do anything today. Not me, no. And I'm not pretending to be my mother. Because my dad did that to me and abused me several times. See you later. <laughs>